to you. Good morning, guys. How are y'all? Yeah, has he has he been picking on the summer? <laughs> A little bit, but it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is. <laughs> I have to know. Everything Rob does is funny. <laughs> Not everything, but a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I'll say, this show is basically my only form of entertainment currently. Well, that's, so that's good. I appreciate it. Yeah, and, and the problem is, some of it's intended to be serious. Yeah. There's, the issue. Now, There's the issue right there. When you say that uh, there has to be a community clown among each group, uh, who would you identify as a community clown? Be careful now. Ooh. Community clown? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what that is. I don't either, but it sounds good. <laughs> clowns can be very scary, I think, though. I think Height's a clown. But oh, oh, he's so good. he's no. in the chat room today, yeah. too, so I think yeah. you just made a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, the Amtrak hater, uh, Height there. Uh, Summer, so we have uh, concluded our legislative session, and that means that Berkeley County has concluded its legislative session in regards to uh, what they needed to have uh, passed or not passed or killed. And you are at uh, the forefront of that. So uh, a couple of things in regards to the county. Something huge got uh, passed in regards to impact fees this year. Can you tell us a little bit about that, getting that through? And yeah. and is, has that been signed by the governor? Has it become law? It Yes, yes. It takes effect June 5th, I think. That's the effective date because it was 90 days from passage. Okay. Clear, um, clear up the misperceptions yes. okay. about this. What will it do? What will it not do? Um, so, the, the and honestly, that was one of the biggest challenges working on the bill because people thought that we were trying to uh, – honestly, I'm not sure what they thought. I, thought. I think they thought we were – this was like the beginning of impact fees, but impact fees and the qualifications and, and the entire structure and system for charging impact fees has been in code for, I don't know how many years, but it's been there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was well before my time uh, working with the legislature. Um, and this bill simply removed one of those qualifications. And that was to have, a countywide comprehensive zoning ordinance. Um, so all the other qualifications to charge impact fees still exist. They're still in place. Um, but this one qualification has been removed. Um, so I think that was probably the biggest just challenge was educating the entire legislature on what the bill actually did. Um, and then explaining to everyone that's not from Berkeley County why the people of Berkeley County want this and the fact that Berkeley County is currently the only county that even qualifies like makes the other meets the other requirements um, for population growth um, so that I, I don't know if I, I know we've talked about it before so I don't know how in the weeds yes. you want me to go well this but, this, um, this bill does not mean that every new home constructed in Berkeley County will be hit with an impact fee correct correct so there are um, the, the county will be able to structure their impact fees um, how they want within within the confines of code a current code so the like if if you owned a piece of acre of land you know let's say 10 acres of land and you were going to build a single family home on that piece of land um you would not be subject to an impact fee so the the fees have to be um they have to be used for a capital improvement project that the people you're charging the impact fees would be directly benefiting from so a good example would be um, in North Berkeley County, they need, let's just say they need a new fire department um, because of all of the new developments that are going in. So the county says, okay, we're going to um, put together a capital improvement project to build a new fire department in North Berkeley County, and it's going to service all of these new developments that are being built in that area of the county. So any new development that would come in those houses would be subject to the impact fee and the impact fee goes to the builder obviously obviously 
they're probably going to just raise the price of their homes by whatever that amount is, a couple thousand dollars per home. Um, but those new homes are then paying for the new service, the new capital improvement project that the county has determined they need. It could also be a school. Um, it can be used for parks and rec. It can be used for water projects. Um, so it has to be charged to people who are actually going to benefit from it. And it has to be, you know, those larger development projects. And, um, and summary cannot be for salaries. It has to be for physical st structures. Is that correct? Well, it, in code, it actually, it could be used for salaries. The problem with that is it's not, that's not a sustainable source of revenue. So the county, the, our county commissioners have already said they would never do that because that's not sustainable. Once the impact fee is charged from, you know, on that develop, new development, you wouldn't continue to have that source of revenue coming in. So they, our county commission is, is pretty smart. In fact, that they want to use a continual stream of revenue to pay salaries. So you know for sure once you hire new paid firefighters or new police, whatever they would be hiring, the source of revenue is still going to be coming in long term. A natural, ex um, yeah. excuse me, a natural extension of this would be home rule for county that's been talked about for quite a while. Do you see any movement or any sympathy at all for giving the county's home rule? Um, well, when we talk about home rule, it's it's more, you're probably more referring to the 1% county sales tax. Um, well, that would be certainly one component of it, but there are other uh, other impacts as well, so. Sure. But the when when we most of the time when we talk with the legislature that's that's the issue. They don't you know, there's no heartburn over most of the rest of the pieces of home rule. Um have I seen movement? Yes. There certainly seems to be more of an appetite for it. Um I just think that this legislature is very well, it's very unlikely that this current legislature is going to say, because um, they view it as allowing a tax increase, um, whereas um, you could view it as allowing the counties to make their own decisions and letting those elected officials on the local level make the decision. Um, so uh, I think I've seen some movement. Um, I, I think there's a more creative and likely way that we plan to approach it in the future. Um, the County Commission Association, I've been working really closely with them to try to come up with a better plan moving forward. Um, and it, just to lay out some pieces of it, um, Berkeley County and the commission here is 100% on board with saying any of any revenue that would come in from a 1% sales tax, they would use for uh, public safety. So uh, fire and EMS, um, sheriffs, deputies, uh, school resource officers, those sorts of things. So they are completely fine if the legislature were to even put into code that it has to be used for those things because they already plan to use it for those things. Um, and fire and EMS has been a very big issue with the legislature over the last year, year and a half. Um, so approaching it from that way is, I think, a very good solution because I don't believe the state legislature should continue to take our money here in Berkeley County and send it to other counties to pay for their fire and EMS service. Um, I think we should be able to keep our resources here to pay for protecting our community. Um, so I think it's a good approach for the future and we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Let me ask the same question, but change two words instead of a home rule locality pay. <laughs> well, um, I mean, our, our, our members that represent this area go to Charleston and fight for, for, for locality pay every single session. And, um, 
until more of the state would benefit from locality pay, I don't, I just, there, there's just very little movement on it because everyone is very territorial and we have people stand on the house floor, or the Senate floor and say, are my sheriff's deputies lives uh, worth less than your sheriff's deputies? Well, no, but, but their houses are, you know, our houses are, Yes. Um, we have, we have sheriff's deputies that can't afford a two bedroom apartment and there are sheriff's deputies in different parts of the state living in, you know, a four bedroom house. Um, you know, it's, it's, but, but they don't view it that way uh, because they've never experienced it firsthand. They've never lived in a situation where their public employees can't afford housing. Um, so it, it is, it's a very big hill to climb. And I think locality pay is more unlikely than a, a, a 1% sales tax for counties. Matt Miller. Uh, that whole argument just boggles my mind. I just, I can't wrap my head around not understanding that if the cost of living is cheaper where you are and you make the same amount of money where you are than someone where the cost of living is higher, you have an advantage. And all we're asking is that you allow more pay in that area where the cost of living is higher to even that out. We're not taking pay from you to give it to them. We're just simply saying you have to be able to afford the cost of living. We do it on the federal level. I just don't understand how our state can't get behind it. But as you said, Summer, I guess convincing some of the folks in another part of the state is hard to do. Yeah. Isn't it interesting how, like, living a reality opens your eyes and your mind to something that if you've never experienced it firsthand, you just, like, they just don't see it that way. Um, so, they, you know, it's, 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 it's very interesting. A super majority, um, you know, it's said sometimes that can be even harder to deal with than having, say, just a small uh, majority when it comes to uh, having control of a, a Senate or a House or a legislature. Uh, what has your experience been in, in doing the lobbying, trying to, to get things done for our eastern panhandle and for, for Berkeley County and, uh, and, and having to deal with uh, folks who still have that, that R behind their name, who still have that conservative bent but come at it from a different angle? It's, it is honestly very challenging to deal with the supermajority legislature. Um, I'm, I'm also, I guess, what you would call a, a Republican hack. I've been, you know, I've worked for the Republican Party in the past, and, and I'm part of the state executive committee, and I'm a lifelong Republican. So, like, from that perspective, I, I, I love that we have a supermajority. I think um, our Republican legislature has accomplished a lot for our state in the last several years. But from a lobbyist perspective, it is challenging for sure. There's always, you know, in the House especially, um, there's always a group of maybe 30-ish Republicans who you have to com you have to approach from a completely different perspective. And that we really saw that with the impact fees bill. Um, I spent so much time talking with that group of people and trying to convince them um, that it wasn't a tax uh, increase or, you know, it, just, just you have to really approach it differently with that group of about 30 people. Whereas if you were more in like a 60, 40 setup or 65, 35 setup, um, the caucus sticks together more in their, um, they're, they're less likely to have those factions, but um, it's just a reality of, of the situation, of the political climate in our state, which I'm happy about. I, I worked hard to uh, help get our party to that position, so <laughs> I love it, but I also... Oh, it's also challenging to do my job. Yeah, careful what you ask for, right? You just <laughs> might. Uh, you know, right. Right. Yeah. Hey, uh, Summer, what other legislation will benefit the Eastern Panhandle and uh, Berkeley County specifically that came out this year that you were involved in lobbying for? Um, so I know everyone that comes on the show talks about how challenging this session was and how slow it was. Um, and I agree. It was a tough, tough session. Um, Access Strategies has... I think about 30 clients. I'm not sure the number exactly, but 
all of our clients face these same exact challenges this session. It was a really hard session to get anything accomplished. Um, but we did get three big bills passed for Berkeley County, and I was extremely, <laughs> I feel extremely blessed that we got three passed because it, it was just that difficult of a session. So there were two other bills I just wanted to mention really quick, quickly. One was a fix to a fire fees bill that we had worked on back in 2020. Um, so uh, prior to 2020, in order to see any amendment to a county fire fee, um, the like county fire board would have had to uh, get, I think it was like, 13,000 or more signatures because it was a percentage of your voting population. Um, so it was thousands and thousands of signatures that they would have had to get on a petition in order to amend their the fi current fire fee. So in 2020, we changed that to a ballot referendum. Um, but in that process, there was a little <laughs> oversight, I would say. Um, it basically it's it the new code section said that the fire board would bring the uh, amendment change to the county commission and they would put it on the ballot so basically the county commission had no ability to say no we don't want this on the ballot or we want to amend you know change it prior to it hitting the ballot um and so basically an unelected board would just be putting things on the ballot without any um, I guess checks and balances from the elected officials of the county. So this session we went back in and fixed that. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> it's not. Um, it, it didn't. It doesn't take effect until uh, I guess June. I think. Um, so there will be a referendum on the May primary ballot that was mostly at the request of the county fire board. I do think. The county commission was able to t to collaborate with them and try to get it to a place where um, it also includes some funding for paid staffing, um, whereas the, the fire board generally doesn't include that in their requests. Um, their requests typically are for apparatus and, and those sorts of things. So anyway, long story short, we were able to get that fixed. So in the future, the county commission has the authority to amend or reject those requests um, prior to them hitting the ballot. Do you know yet um, how that will be worded on the ballot? And if if not yet, can you get us that wording at some point along the way? Because as you know, the way some of these things get worded becomes almost impossible to understand what you're voting for and what you're voting against. Yeah, I can try to find it. I actually haven't seen exactly how it's worded. I just saw um, I, I, the first thing I saw was the, the Berkeley County professional firefighters have a Facebook page and they had posted about it being on the ballot because they're supporting, they're obviously supportive of it because they need more paid st staff. Um, they need more paid firefighters in this County. Um, so I, I'm sure, I, but I can definitely get it. Yeah. I can get it to you. Thank you. Sometimes I should read it also. <laughs> yes. Sometimes these things get written like in a double or triple negative and you're not sure exactly what you're undoing or doing. Uh, and then right. was there a third one that uh, you needed to get to, or did we already cover it? Um, I didn't talk about it. And it, 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 it wasn't a county priority, but it popped up during session, and the county commission was supportive. And so I assisted the Economic Development Authority and um, the governor's office. Um, so we ended up lobbying collaboratively with them. There, um, It just was to uh, provide a new definition and code for uh, – regional distribution and dismantling center and it, it was to provide a distinction between that and a traditional salvage yard um and this also was really kind of uh people got upset about it at first because they didn't understand the the reasoning behind it but it actually was to allow a fortune 500 company that's going to hopefully locate in uh, berkeley county to be able to come here and build their facility um, I don't know if it's public information yet, so I don't want to say what the company is. But Hornby didn't say um, the company, but when he was on, he was pretty excited about the company that's coming in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a Fortune 500 company, and I think they're bringing with it a couple hundred jobs. Um, so I, th I think it'll be great for the Eastern Panhandle, and it, um, you know, it's a, it's a respectable company. 
And we just needed to change or add that new definition to code so they could qualify uh, for that. Um, so it wasn't originally a county priority, but it's something that benefits Berkeley County. And so that became, you know, a priority for the commission and therefore for me. They're very good. And uh, you may or may not want to address this, but I did see on Facebook last week, I think it was last week, a pretty good sized debate seemed to break out on the amount of money that access uh, strategies gets from the Berkeley County contract. And some were assuming that that all goes into your pocket. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, everyone assumes that that's my salary. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's not my salary. We um, Access Strategies has a contract with the county, and I am the vice president of Access Strategies. We have um, another full-time lobbyist that we pay. We have an office that we pay for. We have expenses, um, insurance. You know, um, We also pay other people. So... Um, I don't know. I guess people just see that contract amount and think that's my salary, but I'm not. There's There are three registered lobbyists for Berkeley County. Um, so that is, you know, we pay those other people also. Okay. Well, my next question was be, can I borrow $216,000? <laughs> but since you're not getting all that money, I guess I, you can't lend it to me. Yeah. And also a portion of that, I think about 20000 of it is an allocation for expenses. And we maybe end up expensing Berkeley County, I don't know, maybe 5000 maybe. Mm -hmm. um, we've done a really good job of absorbing a lot of our expenses for the county. Um, we just don't bill things to them um, unless we absolutely have to. So the only way we would ever have to bill Berkeley County an expense is if we take legislators to dinner and are talking to them about county priority bills. Um, then obviously it's ethically, you have to bill that to, to that client. How about um, radio uh, talk hosts? Do you take them to dinner as well? Is that ex a defendable expense? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's just get it right out of Steve Catlett's pocket. <laughs> not on Berkeley County time. <laughs> Summer, thank you very much. When do you do? Oh, uh, well, I'm due May 31st, but we're we're already on bed rest, so she's probably going to come long before that. Well, you have yourself yeah. a great day, and uh, all the best in the rest of your pregnancy. All right, and I, I can't wait to tell you all her name. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See you, Summer. <laughs>